just a little bit about hypothesis, then look at some additional examples of using the scientific method, and then uh, we'll talk maybe a little bit about observation or hypothesis. So to begin, what's our new and improved definition of a hypothesis? Anybody remember what we said about it? Ali? It was something about like uh, serial and Yes, serial. What's our hypothesis, Diksha? A prediction about the experiment. Yeah, it's a prediction about what you think is going to happen in your experiment. And it has to be testable. So in science, your hypothesis has to be something that you can test using a what? What do we do to test the hypothesis? We do an experiment. We try to write them as if-then statements, if we can. So some examples here. If you turn out all the lights, you'll fall asleep fast. If you eat only fast food, and you will gain weight. Those are hypotheses. You could test them using an experiment. And so it's important if you want to have a good hypothesis, a well-formed, appropriate hypothesis, it needs to be testable. It always must be a sentence. You can never have a hypothesis in the form of a question. All right, so let's look at some examples. These are hypotheses, that's the plural. And what I've asked you to do is circle the independent and dependent variable in these hypotheses. Because if we set it up as an if-then statement, it's pretty easy to identify those things. So if a plant receives fertilizer, then it will grow larger. What's the independent variable in that experiment? So now? Yeah, whether or not they're getting fertilizer, the amount of fertilizer. What's the dependent variable in this experiment? Tyler? The growing of the tree. Yeah, the growth of the plant. If I put fenders on my bike, they'll keep the, the rider cleaner. You know what fenders are? It's that little like rubber plastic flap that goes over the back tire on your bike so when you're riding through the mud it doesn't all spray up. Like um, so what is the what's the independent variable in that experiment? Colin? Uh, the independent variable is the fenders. Yeah, having the fenders on the bike. What's the dependent variable? William? Yeah, the how clean the rider is. So you get the point. When you set up your Hypothesis as an if-then statement, you always find the independent variable in the if part, and you find the dependent variable in the then part. If I study more, then I'll receive better grades. The amount of studying is the independent variable. The grades are dependent. So you get the point. Here's an interesting experiment. Not that I'm suggesting you try this at home. That's great. This is um, when Mr. Arcario was a kid in junior high, this is this, this is the project that he did. Yeah. This is his post this is the poster he made. He, he. So don't eat any rice krispie treats from Mr. Arcario. He may be trying to recreate that experiment. All right, let's look at another experiment. A farmer wanted to know if music <clears throat> would make his chickens lay larger eggs. He took two groups of chickens, placed one group in a pen with music, the other group was placed in a pen with no music. You go ahead and answer these four questions, and then we'll go over them.
variable in this experiment. What's the thing that's different? How? Uh, the music being played in the chamber. Yeah, whether or not there's music. Now be careful here. I see some people giving me sort of too much in their answer. When we're asking for the independent variable, all we want to know is what's different. And in this case, it's the music. So don't give me the whole hypothesis back again. Some people have said the pen that has music playing. But that's not really the independent variable. That's giving me one of the groups. Okay? So just try and be concise. Just what's different about them, whether or not they have music. What's the dependent variable in this experiment? Again, be brief, be concise. Abby? The size of the chicken's eggs. Exactly, the size of the eggs. Don't say which laid larger eggs. Okay. Just tell me what are we going to be measuring? What's the data that we're gathering? Okay. Right, which one is the control group in this experiment? S? The group Yeah, the group with no music. That's the control group. It's not a question, but what would we call the other chicken pen with music like? What's the name? Exactly. Oh, experiment? That's the experiment. Okay, what are some variables we should hold constant in this experiment? Sean? The food fed to the chicken. Yeah, what kind of food they're in, Sean? Same size pen. Same size pen. Have? Same amount of time. Same amount of time. Elizabeth? The same amount of chickens. Same number of chickens. Yeah, all those things should be the same. We could come up with a long list um, of things. these things? I'm going to just skip ahead of these examples. If you want to do them as practice, you can. All right. Let's talk a little bit about observations and inferences. Have you heard of an inference before? Yeah. All right. So starting with observation. Though. An observation is using your senses, using a tool sometimes to collect information. And we have two categories of observations that uh, we often make. Quantitative observations and qualitative observations. Quantitative sounds like what word? Quantity. Quantity. Because quantitative observations have a number with them. They're numerical. Often they're made with a tool. Measuring something with a ruler is a quantitative measurement. Weighing something is a quantitative measurement. Counting something is a quantitative measurement. If I say Mr. Arcuri weighs 100 kilograms, right, that is a quantitative observation. So, what do you think a qualitative observation is? Yeah, it's a quality. It doesn't have a number with it, it's more of a description. say the lightning was bright. That's a qualitative observation. Mr. Arcuri is a large man. That's a, quali it's a qualitative observation. So what's an inference then? You guys heard of inferences? Directly? No. It's almost like a sentence. Sort of. It's like um, an assumption you might make based on your observation. Observe it. It's a conclusion you make that's based on some observation. You know, if you come out of a movie theater after a movie and you see the ground is wet, 
What would an inference be? That it rained. What is your observation that led you to that inference? Elizabeth? Yeah, the ground was wet. You can actually observe that. Did you observe it raining? No. So it's an assumption you're making based on the fact that the ground is wet. But you could be wrong as well. Observation, uh, inferences could be incorrect because you're not directly observing them. Maybe different. Maybe they ran a charity car wash in the parks not while you were watching the movie. Maybe there's a fire in the fire truck that came, put it out, and left, and that's why it fell. All right. So we walk into the gym on Friday morning. The bleachers are cluttered with paper cups and food wrappers. The scoreboard's still lit up, and it reads Spartans 47, Visitor 35. Okay. These statements, there was a basketball game last night. Is that an observation or an inference? Raise your hand if you can tell me that. Observation or inference. 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 You, you weren't actually there, so you didn't actually observe the basketball game. The scoreboard is lit up. So now, that's an observation. There were many people there. Okay? Observation? That, that's not an observation because we didn't see them. Right? We see their cups and all their litter and stuff, but we don't see them, so that would be an inference. Because we're assuming that based on what we see. There are paper cups in the bleachers. Lily? Go by Lily or Lily. Yes, that's an observation. All right, let's skip this. All right. So, let's uh, let's look here at a picture. Somebody give me an observation that you can make. Abby. The tank seems to be balancing on the gun in the front. Okay. Another observation. Yeah? It's sideways. Tank is sideways. It could mean an inference. Oh. Tyler? Maybe there was an explosion. Maybe there was an explosion. True. Pulled down a hill. Pulled down a hill. Yeah. All right, let's look at this picture of Mr. Arcuri and his friends. Um, <coughs> Give me an observation based on this. Um, does he have? There's a man wearing a zebra print skirt, yes. Um, give me another observation. So that? Who does? Everyone? This guy don't look too happy. That doesn't actually look happy. Okay, some of the people look happy. Is that an observation? Would you call the people look happy an observation or an inference? I guess maybe more. How, what would an observation be that you could use to make that inference? Ashley? They're smiling. They're a smile on their face. That might indicate that they're happy. Um, Observation. Sean? Polar bear's green. Inference? Colin? Uh, polar bear swing and algae or something. Okay. Observation? Tyler? Someone probably drove off. What is 
that? Observation or inference? That's an inference, right? Yeah. All right. All right. Skip these two. Oh, one. Oh, all right. Yeah, this is another. Did I tell you guys about Mr. Arquette? Abby, okay. This is another another piece of work in the Pets and Produce series. Um, that's, um, Mr. Arcuri calls this one um, Limey Whiskers is the name of this. It's the title of this piece. Limey Whiskers. I tried to tell him he was a whisker. All right, so tell me, is this an observation or an inference? The cat is wearing a lime on its head. Raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. Hello? Yep, that's an observation. Cat's going on a motorcycle ride. <laughs> or any of this stuff. Uh, we skip that. Oh, let's see. I like this one. Oh, don't look. All right. You don't have this one, do you? All right. So these are fossils that were found. And I'm going to reveal each one in section. So first off, give me an First, an observation. Careful about how you phrase this. You want it to be an observation. Alice? The yeah, these footprints are larger than the red ones. We can see that. Another observation. Okay. The tracks appear to be heading in different directions. Uh, okay. Or, well, at a point where they may possibly cross. Okay, so they're headed towards each other, they're angled towards each other. That's an observation. All right, give me an inference based on something you're seeing here. Give me an inference. Vanessa? That the red, the red angle, like you saw, the red edge, the red angle, like you saw in the video. Okay, the red. And the animal left the red footprints is smaller than the one that did the green. That's an inference. We can't see that, but we might make that inference. Uh, give me another one, Dick Show. Might what? Might cross. All right. Let's look. Okay. Observation. Alan. Uh, the both sets of. They didn't meet? Okay. Tyler? They walked around. <laughs> um, that's, that's more of an inference. They were. Getting towards inference, because you're not seeing them walk around, right? You're, you're well, saying that based on what you see here. <laughs> One more observation. Okay? Their tracks went all over the place. Okay, they started, they weren't going in a straight line. Either. Okay. Inference. Yeah? 
They fought. Tyler? Okay. Tom? Uh, this one would have worked for position one as well, but the animal and whatever would be three footprints, probably longer like legs. Okay. The footprints are farther spread out. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Observation. Observation. Jake. The red, the red tracks stopped. There's no more red tracks. Okay. Another observation. Elizabeth. Green tracks kept going. Green tracks kept going. Inference. Let's see. Okay. The green guy <laughs> and another inference? Is there any other explanation? Uh, the green guy is giving the red man a piggyback. Okay. <laughs> Way to look on the bright side, Tyler. <laughs> Maybe they were mating. Oh, two. <laughs> Sorry, I went there. Maybe they weren't land animals. Maybe one of them flew away rather than was eat them or got a piggyback ride. <laughs> we don't know. All right. What happened? Observation or inference? There was an earthquake. Inference. All right. We don't need to do 8,000 examples.